ken among langit nun nga amahan ani ana sad kami karon gabi una og nangayo nga kanunay unta nga magmadasigon ang matagsa kanamo amo usab nga giampo nga magpabilin untang lagsik ang among mga pamilya nga igala og matagsa ni ning asod ka mapasalamaton kami sa presensya ug paggiya ila binasa kakugi gayud nga gipaambit ni attorney JBJ kanamo no pa nga kaming tanan makatun o makahinumdum sa tanan namong gisgutan karon o sa umaabot pang panahon. Kini among gipangayo, pinagi ni Kristo, among ginoo. Amen. Tansamahan sa anak, sa Espiritu Santo. Amen. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the University of the Visayas Julius Law School Visayanian Bar Operations Excellence by Yusek JBJ. But before I officially turn over the virtual floor to Attorney JBJ, just a little housekeeping before we get started. Please remain muted as soon as you enter the meeting. You can do this by clicking on the microphone icon on your screen. And please do not unmute your microphone, especially when Attorney JBJ is speaking. You may type your questions, your comments, or your concerns in the chat box, and we will be addressing them after G Attorney JBJ's presentation. We look forward that you guys are with us until the end of this lecture. So I now welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the very energetic, the very resourceful and informative attorney, Yusek Josephus B. Jimenez. Good evening, uh, fellow Visayanians. I'm very happy that today, before six o'clock, we have reached already uh, more than 50 and this is uh, credited to the effort of attorney Wagas who invited even our uh, director for uh, student affairs uh, Dr. Velasco and also uh, I have a friend coming from uh, our town in Ronda, Cebu, who worked in Mindanao and now retired and joining us, Mr. Felix Tejero. I welcome him here. And uh, all of you, I, I understand that there are students, new students, the College of Law, the University of the Visayas. I am very happy to be doing this as my offering to my alma mater. I graduated from the UB Gullias Law School in 1974 uh, without paying a single centavo to university. I was a university scholar all the way from four, first year to fourth year. And I think my uh, average uh, is 1.3 something. That's why I graduated magna cum laude and class valedictorian. And uh, I was also the president of the Supreme Student Council and uh, I'm, uh, one of the editors of the Visayanian at that time. So even if I was a working student, I was a court interpreter in the, in the Cebu, Cebu City Court. Uh, from 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I was working. Then I have to run from City Hall to come to UB campus, rushing to the fourth floor of Rivera building where we had classes before. And it was a very difficult life for me, but I struggled very hard. I come from a very poor family. I live in a squatter area in Ber Rodriguez, and uh, I had to support myself, but with the grace of God, even if I was not able to review in Manila, at that time all the reviews were done in Manila, but I reviewed on my own, and I got 84.93 average, the number 10 got a flat of 85. I got 84.93. It was only in taxation and in commercial law that I, 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 I found, it, found the subjects very difficult because we did not have a very good uh, uh, fundamentals of taxation and commercial law. But 
I got line of nine in labor law, in political law, in civil law, and uh, I, I did very well in many of the subjects. So I am uh, inspiring you now and giving back to my alma mater all the all the what I owe to them, and uh, I give it back to you. So tonight, uh, after uh, so many meetings already, I think we are uh, in meeting number 10. We are now, uh, uh, th this is the 10th meeting, and we are going to discuss book three of the Labor Code. As I have told you uh, earlier, there are three books in the Labor Code that are very important. Uh, we all know that there are seven books in the Labor Code, seven books in the Labor Code. And uh, I identified three books as the most important of them all. And this is book three, which we are going to discuss all about wages, benefits, hours of work, and labor contracting, job contracting, as well as the visitorial power of the Secretary of Labor. That is book three. The next book that is very important is book five. That is where uh, labor relations is contained. And uh, in book five, we will discuss unions, collective bargaining, unfair labor practice, strikes, and uh, procedures, labor procedures, starting from the labor arbiter to the NLRC. And book six is the third book that is very important because in the bar examination since 50 years ago, every year, two or three questions come from book six. And this is about illegal dismissal. Special and especially today with the pandemic, there's a lot of retrenchment, redundancy, installation of labor saving devices, and also mergers and consolidations, sell or, uh, sale of company, and also spin off of certain units of the company. What are the effects of this corporate transformations to the security of tenure of the employees? And so uh, I ask you to come regularly. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. This is for free, no? And uh, I, I uh, thank uh, Attorney Wagas for uh, her hard work in preparation of, uh, uh, of everything and coordination. That's why today we have more than 50 because I think the new students of UV are joining us as well as friends from the administration and uh, even Bisayanians coming home. No? So without further ado, ado, I will now start. Uh, this is uh, really the uh, 21 fundamental principles governing wages and benefits in the Philippines. So uh, even uh, yung mga nasa administration can derive benefit out of this. Uh, Last night, uh, uh, no, early this morning, two o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I gathered some cases. I prepared uh, uh, my own PowerPoint no? at my age. Uh, I, I am still very passionate and dynamic and enthusiastic in preparing all these things for you. As I have told you, if you have a copy of the book that I authored together with my son, a new lawyer who took his oath one year ago, Attorney John Paul Jimenez, uh, we authored this Ultimate Labor Law Compendium. Compendium. It's more than 1,000 pages. Everything that you need to know uh, about labor from hiring to retiring is there in a very concise, comprehensive, compact, and complete way. And uh, what is very good in this book is that there is the uh, strategy and techniques uh, how to prepare for the bar examination. There is uh, 
proven uh, techniques in answering bar questions, how to make uh, logical answers, and uh, proven because this has been used by bar top notchers. I have been teaching uh, law since 1977 when some of you were not yet born. No? I always am proud to say that uh, Vice Mayor Mike Rama, former mayor, was my student in 1978 here in the College of Law of the Goliath Law School. Together with the late Serge Rimundi from Cebu, who became a cabinet secretary uh, under the JMA administration. So, many of the benefits that, uh, that we are going to discuss today uh, include not just the minimum wage, but also the holiday pay, the premium pay, premium pay for holiday, premium pay for rest day, premium pay for special day, and uh, overtime pay, night shift differential pay, service charge, service incentive leave, paternity leave, parental leave, the solo parents law, the leave for the violence against women and uh, children, also a special leave for women under the Magna Carta uh, for OB, gynae, oberectomy, hysterectomy, and uh, mastectomy. And also 13-month uh, pay, the law on 13-month pay, Presidential Decree 851, uh, separation pay, whether it is a separation pay for retrenchment, for redundancy, or separation pay in lieu of reinstatement when reinstatement is no longer feasible. And also retirement pay, employees compensation benefits in case of disease, death, and disability arising in connection with an uh, arising from uh, work-connected causes, then Pell Health and SSS. So, for uh, the Labor Code, we will start with Article 82, but actually I, I did not follow the chronological sequence. I'm using the principle-based teaching. In other words, I just summarized everything uh, in 21 principles. So, uh, you can take picture, you can, uh, uh, in fact, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, and you can do that right after tonight. Uh, you just type USEC GBJ. You can have free copy of this uh, presentation together with uh, all the videos that I have presented. So, talagang uh, napakahalaga, importante kayo that you can subscribe so that you can avail of the free video uh, by being a subscriber to my YouTube channel. So, uh, I have quoted here uh, some very important uh, uh, nuggets of wisdom coming from uh, great men. They wrote something about uh, wages and salary, unions, labor, law, and uh, Abraham Lincoln, perhaps the greatest president of the United States. He was the emancip emancipator of the slaves. He was the, he was the one who abolished slavery and he is the 16th president of the United States. And he said that it so happened in all ages of the world that uh, uh, the workers have labored hard while others without doing anything enjoyed the fruits of their labor. So, uh, napakahalaga ang kag-usapan na to because it's about wages. I will just keep some of the uh, quotations in the interest of time. No? Uh, 
but uh, I gathered him uh, very early this morning at two o'clock in the morning. So I always look forward to every Monday. So just an overview, the first principle that we will discuss is the first principle is the principle of universal coverage. Uh, the law on wages applies to all workers, whether you are paid based on time or based on result. Even Pakya workers are entitled to the minimum wage law, according to Republic Act 6727, amending Book 3 of the Labor Code. So don't ever think that uh, yung mga Pakya worker, in fact, even the boundary uh, employees, the taxi drivers, the jeepney drivers, uh, if we are really strict about it, they, they are covered by the law on minimum wage. In other words, the amount that they bring home every day must not be lower than the minimum wage for the region. No? Uh, you, you are aware that there are 17 regions in the Philippines today, and uh, we belong to Region 7. So the minimum wage of Region 7 should at least be received, no? whatever is the amount that they get every day, whether they are Pakya workers, peace rate workers, it should be uh, computed in a manner that it should not be lower than, it can be higher than, but it cannot be lower than the minimum wage for Region 7. So the first principle I'll discuss in detail later. This is just an overview. The second principle is the principle of limited exceptions. You know? Because later on, we will discuss about the BIMBI. What is the BIMBI? It is the Barangay Micro Enterprises. Uh, these are uh, very small companies with five, five uh, workers who cannot afford to pay the minimum wage and therefore, the law, in order to encourage private enterprise, are giving, the law is giving them leeway, limited exception. No? If you are a BIMB and you are registered with the local government and the Department of Trade and Industry, your uh, authorized capital is not more than 3 million pesos. Uh, you can apply for exemption from uh, the minimum wage, but exemption is not forever. It can be granted for a limited period of one year without prejudice to renewal if you are qualified. The third principle is the, the famous principle of no work, no pay. No? We, will, we will amplify, elucidate, and discuss that principle later on. The fourth principle is the principle of criminal liability for violation of minimum wage law. We have a Republic Act that punishes uh, uh, violation and uh, gives it a penal sanction. Penal, no? So, uh, yung ibang tao, mostly, they do not know that if you do not pay the proper minimum wage for your people, you can go to jail for that. And there are already convictions made which were affirmed by the Supreme Court for violating the minimum wage law. You know, in labor law, there are very few, uh, there are very few instances of criminal liability. One is illegal recruitment in book one, no? Another is uh, allowing a worker to work without an SSS registration. And uh, another is collecting SSS contribution and failing to remit it to the SSS. It can be considered criminal. And the last would be unfair labor practice by virtue of the Labor Code as amended by Republic Act 6715 
authored by Abishayanian, Senator Boy Herrera, uh, unfair labor practice is now a criminal offense. No? So, uh, when the labor code was promulgated in 1974, uh, unfair labor practice was not yet a criminal offense, but because of a graduate of the UB Gullias Law School who did not take the bar and who became senator, Senator Ernesto Boy Herrera, he amended the labor code and made it a criminal offense. So it's an honor on our College of Law that uh, one of our uh, the late the late uh, alumnus of the UB College of Law uh, made a lot of changes in the labor code, and one of which is that one. So talking about criminal liability, then the double indemnity law. Uh, this is uh, uh, a punishment to all violators of the minimum wage. The first punishment is criminal liability. The second is you will double the amount that is due and demandable by your employees. And this is not or, it, it's and. In other words, uh, you will have to be imprisoned and at the same time, you have to pay double. So uh, we have to be very careful about uh, paying our employees. You are a businessman. The sixth principle uh, is that criminal liability is imposable on corporate directors, executives, partners. So if you have a business and uh, your uh, HR staff or accounting staff uh, committed a mistake uh, in the computation of wages and uh, even if the mistake is done in good faith, good faith is not a defense because this is a malum prohibitum. This is, uh, this is not a malum per se by special law. Uh, even, if, even if you will say we did not do it intentionally, but if there was a mistake in the computation of the minimum wage, and as a result of the mistake, uh, the minimum wage law was violated in, uh, inadvertently or unwittingly, then there is criminal liability, and there is civil liability, which is the double indemnity. And this criminal liability would be imposed on the president of the company, the managing director. If, if it is a partnership, the managing partner, not the staff down who committed the error. No, it is the big, the big ones will go to jail for the mistake of their subordinates. Then the seventh principle is the qualified bimbis, meaning the uh, uh, micro enterprise, the barangay micro business enterprise. That is the meaning of bimbi. Huh? Hindi ito yung anak ni Chris Aquino. Huh? This is another bimbi. B-M-B-E -E is barangay micro business enterprise and the law uh, the law defines uh, micro as uh, 3 million 3 million authorized capital and below 3 million and below if your business is 3 million and below if you have a, a beauty shop or a little sari sari store and you have employees uh, you can apply for exemption from the minimum wage, but it's not automatic. You have to apply. Eighth principle is uh, governing workers paid by result. In other words, kung pakyaw pakyaw ang pagbayad sa mga empleyado, how does the government make sure that the amount paid by the employer is not 
uh, shocking to the conscience of man. Yung bang the ginuto ni mo, yung mga tao na uh, you do not pay him uh, the correct amount. How, how does the Department of Labor acting in behalf of the state in implementation of the mandate in Article 13, Section 3 of the Constitution that uh, assure full protection to labor? And how does, how does the DOLE make sure that the amount paid is uh, commensurate with minimum wage? Kung saan man nato pag uh, kwenta, kung ang gibayad nato sa tao, kung pakyaw, walimbawa, paggawaan ng rattan chair sa, sa Mandawi, may mga rattan factory, uh, how do we make sure na ang gibayad nato sa Osaka chair is commensurate with the minimum wage? Uh, when uh, they are not paid really based on number of hours but based on results, well, there is such thing as time and motion study. And uh, if you take up labor standards, you have to be aware of the procedure of time and motion study. The ninth principle is the principle uh, governing apprentice learners. When you have apprentices and learners, under the labor code in book two of the labor code entitled human resource development, the, the law allows you to pay only 75% of the applicable minimum wage. Uh, why, why only 75%? It's because the apprentice or the learner is also learning while he is earning. So the 25% is his tuition fee. So kung ikaw employer, you are supposed to give him a classroom instruction, no? And uh, you have to give him lectures because he is learning. But this learnership and apprenticeship is only for limited period of time. And... Uh, this cannot be forever, three months or six months. But when it comes to the PWD, because of their uh, limited dexterity, although I know of many PWDs who are more hardworking and more efficient than the physically fit people, but the law, just to encourage employer to hire PWDs aside from tax tax incentive uh, they can be paid also 75 percent of the applicable minimum wage no but we I'm just still giving you the overview no the tenth principle is the principle governing tax exemption well uh, I will discuss with you uh, that if you are a minimum wage earners, you can apply for tax exemption. Uh, uh, no, the, if you are the employer of the, the minimum wage earner, uh, you are not allowed to deduct anything from his wage. If he does not exceed a threshold amount, even 13 month pay, a certain portion, a large portion of 13 month pay is tax exempt. The philosophy behind this is, of course, to uh, please close uh, to protect the salary, wages, and income of the the poor uh, workers. Uh, let in this country. Uh, taxation is really uh, put in the shoulders of the middlemen, you know? because the rich people, the Taipans, the Mughals, the magnates, they can avoid taxation through uh, many uh, ways. If you have been listening to the congressional hearing 
involving ABCBN, one of the accusations against the network was uh, creating a layer of corporations uh, owned by the same family just to escape or avoid taxation. No? And, uh, uh, the, the big people in the Philippines, they can always avoid taxation because they have certified public accountants, uh, they have uh, lawyers, tax lawyers, who are expert in tax avoidance. Of course, uh, you, will, you will remember that in, in the Philippines, tax evasion is illegal, but tax avoidance is legal. So you will know what is the difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance. But the real, the real burden in the Philippines is really the middlemen, no? Yung mga executives, no? Pareho kay, kay Ma'am Velasco, no? Na they cannot escape taxation because that is deducted from their salary. When I was with San Miguel Corporation and in Pepsi Cola, and my salary then in Pepsi Cola was uh, about 200,000 a month. No? Can you imagine, uh, 30% of that, and that is about 60,000 a month. I, wa I was paying 60,000 a month to the government. No? So, and in fact, it can be higher because the, the higher I your salary level, the higher would be the, the scale for taxation. It can reach to 35%. That's why Singapore is considered as the best country to work because uh, there is a cap uh, that taxes should not be more than 20%. But I was just telling you a story about taxation. Uh, the next is uh, equal pay for equal work. Earlier, we discuss, uh, we, I, I mentioned the, the principle of no work, no pay. This is another principle of equal pay for equal work. I'll discuss that later on. The 12th principle is the principle of state regulation of minimum wages and benefits. Uh, for the young students, uh, they may be asked the question, is it allowed by law if the employer and the employee will agree and have their agreement in writing and notarized that the employee is agreeing to accept uh, wage below minimum. In other words, is wage purely subject to the contractual uh, agreement or it is subject to the regulation of the state? The answer is all wages, minimum, minimum, uh, are always subject to regulation. So any agreement to receive a wage below minimum is null and void from the very beginning. Because the relationship between labor and management is not merely contractual. It is imbued with uh, the character that involves public interest. Therefore, the state, in the exercise of police power, and pursuant to Article 13, Section 3, the mandate to afford full protection to labor, the state can come in and say, oh, labor, even if you agreed, I will not agree. So yan ang, I always mention that the relationship of labor and em and management is husband and wife. And the government is the mother-in-law. So the mother-in-law will always interfere. And the mother-in-law will say, oh, I don't agree with that. No, Even if the two parties have already agreed, he has still the power to, to veto the agreement because that is exercise of police power. The thirteenth principle is the principle of non-diminution, and this is very controversial. Uh, especially today, 
when there is a pandemic and many employers are suffering from serious financial reverses. Others are suffering from financial hemorrhage. So how can they afford to continue paying all the benefits? Is it okay if some benefits would be withdrawn or would no longer be given after so many years of practice? I'll discuss that. There is a rule and there is an exception. The 14th principle is about quit claims, waivers, and releases. There are companies who have the propensity of preparing quit claims, resignation, waiver, and asking the poor workers to sign blindly. They do not even allow the workers to read the document. They just say, you just sign it. In fact, I know of some security agencies who uh, on the first day when the job applicants join the agency, they would require the guard to sign blank payroll for the next three years. Uh, with It's a payroll without any entry. There's no amount and just sign because that is a condition to hiring. Well, those quit claims, waivers, and releases are null and void for being contrary to public policy. And it violates the principles of obligation and contracts. The elements of contracts are consent, object, and consideration. So that would not be accepted as a valid uh, agreement. And uh, the 15th principle is uh, preference in case of bankruptcy. If the employer becomes bankrupt or insolvent and there are few assets left, uh, the, which one should be paid first? Taxes or the separation pay of the workers? We have decided cases on that. 16th principle, the how to con how to compute separation pay <clears throat> when when the company closes or you are subjected to retrenchment or redundancy or you are asked to uh, leave the company because the employer cannot pay the wages anymore because of financial reverses brought about by the pandemic, what is the formula for computing separation pay? I'll, I'll tell you later on. The 17th principle is the principle governing attorney's fees. You become a lawyer and the, the worker comes to you and say, attorney, help me. I'm going to collect my uh, unpaid wages, my 13-month pay, my benefits. And if you are successful in the case, in handling the case, uh, how much attorney's fees are you allowed to collect? The labor code, particularly Article 111 in Book 3, uh, limits the attorney's fees to 10% for money claims, huh? not, not for illegal dismissal and for uh, unfair labor practice. What the law limits in terms of attorney's fees are for money claims. Any case for the collection of salary and paid wages, benefits, and others, are, uh, the attorney's fees are limited to only 10%. The next is the principle of uh, burden of proof. When you file a case, who bears the burden of proof? The employer or the employee? Don't answer now. You wait for my discussion. The 20th principle is computation of back wages. Back wages is different from separation pay. Uh, back wages is different from retirement pay. So you must know 
what is what are the elements in the computation of back wages the last principle is the principle governing uh, imposition of legal interest if your employer fails to pay, pay you what are due to you and he delayed and delayed the payment you have to file a case the labor uh, the the jurisprudence in the case of Dario Nakar versus Gallery Frames decided by the Supreme Court in Bank with Justice Justado Peralta now the Chief Justice who incidentally is my neighbor here in Babe Homes no si Chief Justice Dado Peralta uh, wrote uh, this uh, decision which was unanimously uh, agreed to by all the 15 justices of the Supreme Court that there should be an an imposition of 6% interest because your money was unlawfully withheld by your employer and it, oh, it is just uh, fair and reasonable that you should be paid interest for uh, that money. And so before I discuss in detail, I, I want you to remember book, uh, Article 13, Section yeah. 3. In fact, uh, I am strongly encouraging you to memorize this article before you take the bar. Memorize. You may not believe it, but when I took the bar, I memorized the Constitution from preamble to transitory provisions, but that was the Constitution of 1935. It was a very short Constitution. It's only one fifth of the Constitution of 1987. 1935 Constitution was a very short Constitution, practically copied from the United States, especially the Bill of Rights. I memorized that from, can you imagine, from the preamble to the transitory provision? So you have to memorize this article because all the rights of labor are, are enumerated here the right to self-organization, collective bargaining, the right to strike, peaceful concerted action, including the right to strike in accordance with law, the right to full employment and equal employment opportunity, the right to security of tenure, right to living wage, the right to humane conditions of work. Now, if you classify the, the rights, uh, you who are going to take the bar, huh? labor standards. But labor standards, you, you think of living wage, human conditions of work, uh, equal work opportunity, and uh, full employment. Those are labor standards. For labor relations, self-organization, collective bargaining, peaceful concerted action, participation in policy and decision making, and security of tenure. These are the rights. You have to identify which right belongs to labor standards and which rights belong to labor relations. For those new students, labor standards means book one up to book four. Labor relations is book five, book six, and book seven. Now, book one is about recruitment for overseas employment. Book two is training, human resource development. Book three is what we are discussing tonight, is about wages and benefits. And uh, book, uh, book four is 
about uh, disease, disability, and death in relation to work. When an employee uh, uh, is infected by a disease, and the disease can be connected with the nature of his work, then he is entitled to disability and benef uh, sickness benefits under Book 4. So anything about money is labor standards, but it, it comes to relations like uh, union relations, collective bargaining, and also termination of employment in Book 6. That is labor relations. So uh, labor law is really divided into three, labor standards, labor relations, and social legislation. Social legislation is somehow uh, related to labor standards because it has something to do with SSS, Pell Health, Pag Ibig, and employees' compensation. So the three branches of labor law, labor standards, and social legislations are related and the other one is labor relations, which includes labor procedures, how to file cases, compulsory arbitration or voluntary arbitration. Still part of the constitution is the principle of shared responsibility and the promotion of a preferential use of voluntary modes of dispute settlement. In other words, there is a bias in favor of voluntary arbitration rather than compulsory arbitration. When you talk of in LRC, that is compulsory arbitration. When you talk of NCMB, National Conciliation and Mediation Board, that is uh, voluntary arbitration. So the state shall regulate the relations between workers and employers. That's why I told you earlier, even if the employee agrees to a wage below minimum wage, the state shall, in other words, it's a mandate, it's mandatory. The state is mandated to intervene. The state is mandated to intervene because intervention is a form of protection. And uh, in the intervention, there is a recognition of the rights of labor to a just share in the fruits of production and the rights of the employer to profit. In other words, even if our constitution is pro-labor, there is also a recognition of the right of the owner of the business to earn profit and to have a reasonable return on investment, no? ROI, re return on investment, and to expand and to grow. So may mga company na uh, nagbabayad naman ng tamang minimum wage, but for so many years, hindi nagbibigay ng salary increase. So ang tanong dyan, nagbabayulit ba ang company ng batas? The answer is no, because they are paying the minimum wage. And kung ang company na yan ay invest na ibayad sa mga tao ng increase, ay in-expand niya ang kanyang mga operation, nagtayo siya ng mga branches, can the worker say na instead of opening new branches, why don't you give a salary increase? Well, if you form a union, and your union is recognized or wins in the certification election and you negotiate for a higher salary than the minimum, that is allowed. But without a union, the employer has the right not to give salary increase even for 20 years. Of course, from the HR point of view, that is not good because you will be losing a lot of people you will be losing a lot of people kasi magre-resign yan. Uh, but in, in the eyes of the law, you have not violated anything. No? From, from the HR point of view, merong kaming terms sa HR na ERM, Attract, Retain, and Motivate. 
How can you attract a good employee if you are just paying the minimum? How can you retain them if you are just paying the minimum? Or how can you motivate them to excel and to achieve better results in their performance of jobs? So attract, retain, and motivate. But in the eyes of the law, there is no violation. So I will now go into the details of principle number one. No? Uh, principle number one says, the wage orders prescribed by the Regional Tripartite Wage and Productivity Board. Can you memorize that name? Huh? Regional Tripartite Wage and Productivity Board. Issued pursuant to Republic Act 6727. This is another law authored by Senator Boy Herrera. Senator Boy Herrera, a uh, Visayanian like us, was the one who created the Regional Tripartite Wage and Productivity Board. Because during our time, prior to 1989, there was only one minimum wage for the whole country, the Philippines. But today, there is a different minimum wage in every region. In fact, in one region, it can differ. The minimum wage in Cebu City is much higher than the minimum wage in Siquijor. Siquijor is also Region 7. But there is a segmentation depending upon the level of the development of the local government unit. So the wage orders prescribed by the Regional Tripartite Wage and Productivity Board shall apply to all. Take note, huh? I, I give emphasis to all, no? all private sector workers, government employees are not included. No? In fact, uh, sometimes the government is a violator of labor law. No? Yung gobyerno laging nagsasabi na iabolis ang contractualization, pero ang daming contractual sa gobyerno Para ang gobyerno ay sasabihin sa iyong follow what I say but do not follow what I do. No? So minsan na uh, sinusulat ko yan sa kolom ko sa Freeman na ang gobyerno minsan ay nagbabalit ng sarili niyang batas. Pero itong batas kasi sa labor applies only to private sector workers. No? And most, most of the provision of uh, the labor code applies to private sectors. But I will ask you now, among mga graduate na, is there a provision of the labor code that applies to government employee? The answer is yes. And that is book four of the labor code. When, when an employee dies in line of duty, o kung ikaw frontliner ka, nurse ka, Namatay ka because na COVID ka. Or you will be covered by Book 4. And Book 4 covers not just the private sector employees, but also public sector. But now we are focusing on wage. Wage lang muna tayo. Huwag tayong pumunta sa Book 4. Nabanggit ko lang yan because of private sector workers receiving the minimum wage. So this applies to those receiving the minimum wage. Regardless of their position, kahit ano pang position niya, nasa opisina siya o nasa factory, uh, kahit siya ay regular or agency or siya ay uh, provisionary employee, entitled pa rin siya ng minimum wage. Huwag mong sabihin, don't tell me that I'm not paying him minimum wage because he is not yet a regular employee. No! On the first day of the job, he is entitled to minimum wage. No? Whether he is a factory worker, a pakia worker, task or peace rate, he is still entitled. Uh, except only no? when he is a registered BIMBI, Barangay Micro Enterprise Business uh, Barangay Micro Business Enterprises. 
with Certificate of Authority for Suan to Republic Act 10644. Yung authority is to be issued not by DOLE, but by the Department of Trade and Industry. Second principle, principle number two. The principle of limited exemption from compliance with minimum wage. A company or an establishment, you know, when, when the labor code uses the term establishment, it refers to any store, any outlet, uh, even an online business is considered an establishment. No? A company or an establishment may be exempted from, from compliance with wage order. Remember, a may be. It's not, it's not an assurance. It's a privilege. Parang ko niya ni, franchise yan ng ABS, CBN ni. Hindi pwedeng i-demand by the Lopez camp, uh, family yung franchise because it's a privilege given as a gift by the sovereign state. No? So huwag na sila magmamayabang. Kaya yung mga, yung mga eh, employer cannot demand as a matter of right yung exemption because it's a gift. So yung word na may be exempted, in other words, you have to apply for exemption. And you have to submit documents to show that you are unable to pay the minimum wage. Otherwise, the general rule will apply. You have to pay. No? Because uh, what is protected by law and by the Constitution is not the employer, but the employee. So if you are an employer and you request for an exemption, you have to comply with the requirements because it's a privilege. And it can be withdrawn. That privilege can be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. The third principle, the principle of no work, no pay. Well, uh, this is now very relevant today because of the COVID, the COVID pandemic, and there is now an advisory issued by Secretary Bellio allowing compressed work week and also allowing reduced work week. Anong kaibahan ng compressed work week sa reduced work week? Yung compressed work week, yung 48 hours for the six days of work, you know, as of today, normally, there are six days in a week that a private sector worker renders work from Monday to Saturday. Six days times eight hours a day, that is 48. So except for the health workers, health workers are allowed to work only for uh, five days a week. So they have only 40 hours because of the high probability of exposure to virus, germ, bacteria, and all the rest. So, binibigyan sila na exception, but all the, all the rest, 48. Now, pag compressed work week, sasabihin niya na, yung anim na araw mong pinagtrabaho ang 48, gawin nating apat na araw na lang. So, tatlong araw ang rest day mo. But you have to work 12 hours a day without overtime pay. That's allowed. Pero, there must be an agreement between the employer and the employee. And, pag nag-exceed ng 48 hours, bayad na ng overtime pay. Pero, on a daily basis, magtrabaho ka from 6 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the evening. Wala kang overtime pay. That's allowed. Basta compressed work week. Pero, ang reduced work week, on the other hand, <coughs> naghirap na yung company sabi ng company I cannot afford to pay my workers 6 days a week 3 days na lang eh, maghati-hati na lang kayo kalahati magtrabaho Monday to Wednesday another, another group Thursday, Friday and Saturday 
para lahat kayo may income pero 8 hours times 3 imbes na 48 hours kayo sa isang linggo 24 hours na lang and on the days that you do not work you have no pay that is the principle of no work no pay and that is allowed by law but that is only for limited period of time in in the, in case of crisis like this in fact under the labor advisory number 17 and 22 of the dole secretary every six months that arrangement expires now if the pandemic will subsist you can renew that subject to the agreement of the party now if there is no more capability on the part of the employer then we will use book six instead of book three and that is retrenchment and uh, early retirement or voluntary separation with payment of separation pay okay the fourth principle is the principle of criminal liability. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo eh. Republic Act 8188. Amending Republic Act 6727. Kasi ang mga employer, pag hindi mo bigyan ng criminal liability, talagang magbabiolet yan. Sa payroll, ilalagay nilang minimum. Pero ang natanggap sa tao, hindi minimum. Iyon naman mga tao, dahil hirap maghanap ng trabaho, tinatanggap na lang nila kahit masakit. Kaya nga, pag merong inspector, mag interview sa mga workers, nakakaroon ng violation. And that is Article 128, the visitorial power of the Secretary of Labor exercised through the regional director and the inspector. So, this law makes it criminal. Kung ang minimum wage, halimbawa 400, nagbayad ka ng 350, preso ka. Ilang, ilang taon preso mo? Not less than 2 years, nor more than 4 years. And, no, or, 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 or fine uh, of uh, an imprisonment. No? Ang fine is 25,000 to 100,000 or imprisonment of two years to four years or both. Pagalit yung judge sa iyo, yung judge ang merong discretion dyan. Kung maangas ka sa hearing, di ka gumagalang sa judge, mainis yung judge sa iyo. Imbes na fine ka lang, oh, pag fine lang, 100,000, kayang-kaya ng employer. But if you are imprisoned for two years, that's the minimum. That's a big deal. So, be careful about minimum wage. Pag hindi ka nagbayad ng overtime pay, hindi yan criminal offense. Hindi ka nagbabayad ng holiday premium, hindi yan criminal offense. Hindi ka nagbabayad ng 13th month pay, hindi yan criminal offense. Pero hindi ka nagbabayad ng minimum wage, criminal offense yan. Yan ang tandaan nyo. Fifth principle, double indemnity. Yan. In addition to imprisonment and fine. Ito ha. In addition ito. Nasintensyahan kang mabilanggo or pinabayad ka ng fine, or both. On top of that, on top of that, you will have to pay double the amount that is collectible by the employee. Kung meron kang uh, isang daang empleyado or limang daang empleyado, tinuta lahat yan, ang lahat ng underpayment na nangyari, Kinuwenta yan ng dole. Umabot yan ng 3 million. Dodoblihin yan, gawing 6 million. Imbes na ang matanggap ng empleyado, 3 million lang, magiging 6 million. Nagbayad ka na ng 6 million, na bilanggo ka pa, 
Kung nagbayad ka pa ng fine, iba yung fine kasi the fine will go to the government. The double indemnity will go to the employee. So do not confuse. Do not confuse the double indemnity with the fine. No? Okay. Number six. Sino ang bibilangguin? Yan. Sir, paano natin mabilanggo yan? Korporasyon yan or partnership yan? O edi yung partner, yung managing partner ang bibilangguin natin. Yung vice president, yung CEO. Can you imagine na uh, Ma'am Velasco, halimbawa magkamali yung magpasahod yan sa UB. Meron yung mga uh, non-teaching personnel, for instance, nagkamali pag-compute. Sino mabilanggo? E di yung mga C CEO natin, COO, yung mga vice president, hindi yung nagkamali, hindi siya ang mabilanggo. Matatanggal lang siya sa trabaho, pero ang mabibilanggo ay yung mga executive. Kaya sa command responsibility, you have to supervise your people. Kayong mga uh, graduate ng law sa torts and damages, you come across with the principle of respondeat superior. Uh, bakit kung ang ikaw may driver uh, may taxi ka pagkatapos ang driver mo ng taxi naka sagasa s'yempre ang pers ang criminal liability siya yun pero yung civil liability kung insolvent yung driver ikaw mapunta because you failed to supervise him and you failed to choose the correct driver so yan ang respondeat superior yan ang command responsibility. Kaya kahit ikaw, mabait ka, magaling ka, pero yung mga tao mo, pwede kang ipahamak. Pwede kang ipahamak ng mga tao mo, mabibilanggo ka na wala, mo, wala kang kaalam-alam. No? And you will say, mag-impose ka na mag-interpose mag, uh, mag ka ng defense ng good faith. Sabi, sir, wala naman akong intention. Good faith ako eh. In criminal law, you will know the principle of mala, par, mala prohibita. Mala prohibita yan. Eh. It's not a mala per se. So sa mala prohibita, it is a special law. And uh, it is a special law. Therefore, uh, criminal intent is not necessary. And good faith is not a valid defense. Parang illegal recruitment yan eh. Parang trafficking in person yan. Pagka, pagka nahuli ka, sabi mo, tumulong lang na naman ako, sir. Hindi naman ako, wala akong masamang intensyon. Kahit wala kang masamang intensyon, bilanggo ko pa rin. Because that is a malum prohibitum. No? Uh, huwag mong sabihin na nagkamali yung mga tao ko. Huwag naman ako ang uh, kakasuhan. O, oh. You failed to supervise it. Therefore, you are liable. And that is by explicit provision of the labor code. Seventh principle. Bimbis. Ito yung sinasabi ko eh. Barangay Micro Business Enterprise engage not all of you, only those that are engaged in the production Processing, manufacturing of products or commodities, including agro-processing, trading, and services. Services, pwede yung services. Himbawa, meron kang beauty parlor, meron kang massage, meron ka spa. That is service. No? And uh, uh, your total assets is not more than 3 million. Asset, ha? Uh, hindi authorized capital, no? Uh, excluding the land where the company is located. So, pag valuation mo ng asset, huwag mo nang bilangin yung lupa kasi mahal ng lupa eh. Uh, yun na lang mga furnitures mo, mga assets mo. Not more than 3 million. You will qualify as a BIMB and therefore you can be exempt from the minimum wage. No? But on a limited time. And the employees, 
pwede ang mga empleyado na uh, mas mababa yung sahod nila. Tsaka kailangan sabihin mo, Sir, magkano ibigay namin kung below minimum? You have to consult the regional office. Hindi yung ikaw-ikaw lang magbuot, ikaw lang magdesisyon. Sobrang-sobrang liit. But nonetheless, even if you pay below minimum, you still have to register your people under the SSS, Pell Health, and Pag-ibig. So, the exemption is only on minimum wage. There is no exemption from SSS. No exemption from employees' compensation. No exemption from Pell Health and Pag-ibig. Kaya, oh, akala mo, isang exemption lang, exempted ka na ng minimum wage, you will demand exemption from, from SSS. No, there is no exemption. Another criminal case yan sa SSS. If you allow a worker to work without SSS, Meron kasing mga tao, mga pilosopo sa Bencer, ayaw na lang kung didakig SSS. Ayaw na lang kung didakig Pell Health Sir, kaya ako ay bahala na ako'y HMO, na ako'y MaxiCare. Ayaw yun magsugot kasi at the end of the day, even if there is an agreement, even if the agreement is put in writing, that is still null and void. And... Of course, sa pill health, you will not go to jail. But sa SSS, you will be jailed for that. The eighth principle. Ito yung kakyaw, peace rate. Uh, the regional director of Dole will send a representative to conduct a time and motion study. If you have a factory manufacturing uh, t-shirts or mga short pants, the dollar representative will go there for eight hours and count the number, average, average number of uh, short pants that can be completed in eight hours, and he will divide the eight uh, the if there are 100 short pants finished, oh, shadong marami ang 100. Limbawa 20, you can finish 20 short pants in eight hour in eight hours. So that means that you divide that 20 by by eight. So whatever is the minimum wage for eight hours, by ratio and proportion, the the piece rate, the piece rate should be paid in accordance with the uh, result of the time and motion study. Okay? The ninth principle is the principle of apprentice. Well, uh, we are encouraged to hire apprentice and learner and PWDs. Uh, uh, PWDs now, by virtue of the amendment of the Magna Carta, it used to be that PWDs were paid 75% only. But because of the Magna Carta for PWDs that prohibits discrimination, they are now paid 100%. But the learners and the apprentices, they can be paid 75% of the minimum wage, but for limited time. Uh, when you want to hire an apprentice, do not go to the Dole, you go to the Tesda. Because this uh, function, when, when, during my time when I was under Secretary of Labor, apprentice was under the Dole, but it was later transferred to Tesda because it has something to do with training and development. The next one is tax exemption. Effective January 1, 2018. Ito ha, new ito, bago ito. Kayong mga uh, estudyante, 
this is a very good uh, information. Salaried individuals earning an annual compensation of 250,000 or below are exempted from taxation. So kung 250,000 yan, divide by 12, magkano lang yan? Magkano lang yan ang monthly yan? So mga below 20,000 yan. And the following income of um, uh, MWEs are also exempted from income taxation. Ano ba yung MWEs? Minimum wage earners. No? Minimum wage earners are exempted from income tax. Minimum wage. Yung minimum wage mo, yung COLA, if there is any, holiday pay, overtime pay, night shift differential, hazard pay, 13 month pay, na limited lang ha, not exceeding 90,000. Pag meron kang 13 month pay higher than that, meron ng portion na taxable. So, these are all provided by law. What is the purpose of the law? At least masasabi nyo si Presidente Duterte during his time. Talagang makamasa si Presidente Duterte. Kasi tinaasan niya yung bracket ng mga exempted ng taxation. So sino na lang magbabayad ngayon ng taxes? Sila ni Ma'am Bilasco. Sila na lang kasi sila ni Attorney Wagas, sila ni Dean. Sila ang magbabayad kasi mataas naman yung sahod nila. Ma mas mataas sila sa mga accepted. So 11 principle, the principle of equal pay for equal work. Well, in the case of Alliance of International School, no, the, this is a very important case. Kasi sa International School, which is located in Makati City, all the expat in the Philippines, if you are a German, an American, or you are a Japanese, a South Korean, you send your children to international school. And the tuition is very high. Now, itong mga administrator ng school na ito has to hire, they have to hire teachers from other countries. So mag-hire sila ng mga European teacher, American teachers, Chinese, no? So, to give to attract them, to motivate them to come to the Philippines, they are offered higher salary than the Filipinos who are doing the same job. So, kung teacher kang Pilipino, nagtuturo ka sa international school, ang sahod mo, mas mababa kaysa sahod doon sa foreign hires at wala ka pang privilege ng housing. Maraming, maraming privilege yung mga foreign hires na dinideny doon sa local hires. So, because of this, nagreklamo yung mga nag-form sila ng union, International School Alliance of Educators. Ang nag-file sila ng kaso. Natalo sila kay Secretary Leonardo Kisumbing. Kasi from the regional director, he appeal doon sa office of the secretary, si Kisumbing. Now, pinailan nila ng uh, petition for certiorari under Rule 65, grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack of, this, of uh, jurisdiction. And the Supreme Court, no, the Supreme Court uh, decided in favor of the teachers. The Supreme Court said that you cannot discriminate against the teacher in their own country. Kung ang mga Pilipino dinidiscriminate kung mag-abroad sila, dito ba naman sa sarili nilang bansa, i-discriminate pa rin sila? 
if you are doing the equal pay, uh, equal work, they have to give an equal pay. So kung ang trabaho mo, pariho lang sa trabaho ng iba, there is no reason why you should not be given the same salary. Because this violates the Equal Protection Clause, Article 3, Section 1 of the Bill of Rights. No person shall be deprived of his life, liberty, and property. Neither shall any person be denied equal protection of the law. And uh, in the Constitution, you know, there is a specific provision against discrimination. And that is also in Article 13, Section 3, as I earlier, earlier showed to you. Equal work opportunity. The state shall guarantee equal work opportunity regardless of sex or age, race, and creed. May pang-apat yan, unionism. You cannot discriminate against those who are members of unions. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, ah, membro ng KMU yan, huwag mo yung i-promote or huwag mong bigyan ng increase yan. No? Of course, you can discriminate based on character, for instance, uh, yung maraming absenteeism, pwede mo yung hindi i-promote, height, height, pwede kang mag- discriminate based on height a complaint stewardess ka paano mo paano ka makatrabaho kung below 5 ka di mo maabot yung compartment sa itaas ng passenger wait pag overweight ka naman masisira mo naman yung mga upuan so ay, hindi tayo mag hire ng mga overweight pwede yan gawin that's not illegal or educational qualification O kailangan master's degree holder or experience, seniority. That is a valid classification that is germane to the purpose of the law and that is not a violation of the equal work opportunity. Okay, the principle regulating minimum wage. I, as I have told you earlier, in Article 13, Section 3, the third part, the state shall regulate. In other words, the state has a mandate to interfere. The state has a mandate to intervene, even if no one is complaining. Kaya, merong nagre-reklamo. Wala namang nag ng complaint sa factory. Bakit dumarating ang dole? mag inspect under Article 128, visitorial power. Then mag interview ng mga worker, titingin ng mga physical arrangement, so, uh, mag ng issue on safety, health, and mag mag ng payroll, titingnan yung mga uh, voucher. That is part of the uh, regulation. And regulation is just a means to protect, to afford full protection to labor. Yeah. In the court, or oh, in the case I have mentioned, International School versus Honorable Kisumbing, uh, and in a long line of cases in this jurisdiction, the state has the power and even the duty not just the power, but the duty to regulate the relations between labor and capital. Because under uh, the Civil Code of the Philippines, the relationship between labor and capital is not merely contractual, but it is imbued with public interest. Therefore, the state in the exercise of police power has the right to intervene in that relationship. The third principle is that ito, ito yung pinaka-controversial sa lahat because uh, 
I have divided this into four groups, A, B, C, and D. The principle of non-diminution, there is the liberal approach. No? There are two kinds of approaches. The liberal approach is the first one. And under the liberal approach, no, uh, this article is interpreted to include all increases. Kasi pag binasa mo yung article 100, sinabi lang naman na kung ano ang mga sahod ng empleyado noong May 1, 1974 at the time of the promulgation of the Labor Code ay hindi dapat bawasan. So it refers only to those salary as of May 1, 1974. But the liberal approach has expanded the meaning of this to include all even after uh, even until now. Pag meron kang sahod, umabot ng sahod mo ng 50,000 a month, kahit maghira pa ang kumpanya, hindi pwedeng ibabayan unilaterally. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, effective next month, all of you will suffer 20% uh, cut of your salary. Because that is the way we have to adapt in order to survive. That is null and void. If it is just imposed, it is not negotiated. Namang pinilit ng employer na bawasan yung mga sahod, alisin yung uh, binipisyo na, na enjoyed for so long under the liberal approach of Article 100 that is not allowed. But there is a restrictive approach which says that yun lang na mga sahod in 1974 ang dapat ma ng Article 100 of the seat of the labor code as I, I was saying then there is a third principle no in the case of arco metal products versus samahan ng mga manggagawa si justice arturo brion bar top of 1974 ateneo clarified that under the principle of mutuality of contract the reason why we are not allowing a unilateral deduction of salary is because contracts are bilateral. If you want to lower the salary, you have to get the consent of the other party. In other words, by virtue of this, uh, the mutual consent approach under the Civil Code of the Philippines it is allowed to negotiate for lower as long as there is no undue influence, no uh, deceit, no, uh, no uh, anything that vitiate the consent. Because you, you are aware that there are three elements of a contract, consent, object, and consideration. So, ang consent must be knowingly, freely, and voluntarily given. Tatlo yan, ha? Knowledge, freedom, and voluntariness. Knowingly. Paano ka magbigay ng consent kung hindi mo alam ang punot dulo? So, yo, there must be full disclosure. Kaya minsan, nakapirma ka ng contract dahil may mga hidden na uh, mga bagay na hindi dinisclose sa'yo. So, your consent is vitiated because you did not knowingly agree to the contract. Para manligaw ka ng babae na nakatakip ang mukha. Tapos hindi mo nakita kung ano talagang mukha niya. Tapos how can you give your consent if you did not knowingly, ano ba yung tinatanggap mo? Pag sinasabi mo, tanggapin mo ba itong pangit na ito? Paano mo matanggap na hindi mo nakita? No, You have to Bago mo tanggapin, kailangan mong, na, kaya nga, knowingly, freely. Ang ibig sabihin ng freely, 
Walang tumutok sa iyo ng baril. You have the right to say no freely. And despite the knowledge, and you have the freedom, you voluntarily gave your consent. So, it is the spontaneous agreement coming from your mind or your will. Sabi nga ni Justice Parasis, the human mind is consists of two faculties, the will and the intellect. Ang will ay maghahanap talaga yan ng something good and the intellect will look for something true. No? So, if the truth and the good comes together, it becomes beauty. No? And therefore, uh, if you agree to accept a beauty or a truth or a goodness, you have to know the entire, the entire story. No? Not partial. Yung nilang, the whole truth. No? You have to know the whole truth because, before you can accept it. So if a partial truth is given to you and you give consent to the partial truth, kaya maraming naghihiwalay mag-asaway dahil nga hindi dinisclose yung whole truth. Eh. Kailangan i-disclose yung whole truth para you will knowingly knowingly give your consent to the whole truth. Eh, yung mga ngayon, makakita ka ng babae. Maganda. Nakasiguro ka bang babae yan? Ayan ang sinasabi ko sa'yo. How can you give consent? Na maraming mga katotohanan ngayon na nag, uh, nag, uh, nag uh, mamaskara. Lalo ngayon, uso na ang maskara. No? Maraming mga katotohanan na nagmamaskara. So how can you give consent to that? Eh, mag-iingat kayo. Next is uh, withdrawal or waiver. Now, ito yung diniscuss ko earlier. No? In the case of Dabao Insular Hotel, nalugi na yung hotel sa Dabao. Uh, binili ni William Gatsalyan. Yung miari ng waterfront sa Lahog at saka waterfront sa airport. Si William Gatsalyan, yun ang ama ni Senator Gatsalyan. Now, binili nila yan. Ang sinabi nila, hindi ko kaya yung mga sahod ninyo kaya nalugi kayo dahil sobrang taas ng sahod nyo. Ang gawin ko ngayon, bayaran ko kayo lahat ng separation pay at Pipiliin ko na lang yung i-rehire. Oh, so nag-iiyakan yung mga empleyado. Sabi, sir, kami ay willing na ibaba namin yung sahod namin. Alisin na yung ibang mga benepisyo. Oh, willing kayo? O oh, sige, sumulat kay sa akin. Sila ang sumulat. They are the one asking that their salary be lowered. And in agree ng management. Ngayon, yung 20% na hindi nag-agree, yung mga rebuilding grupo, yung mga oppositionist, hanggang nakarating sa Supreme Court, ang sabi ng Supreme Court, this is not illegal because this is negotiated under Article 1308 of the Civil Code and negotiated withdrawal with just consideration is not prohibited by law. Kasi binayaran naman sila eh. At saka ang kapalit doon, walang tanggalan. Huh? Uh, anong gusto mo? Malaki na wala o yung maliit na meron? Isang e mabuti na lang yung maliit na sahod na meron kang trabaho kaysa maghangad ka ng mataas na hindi naman kaya ng management. So, hindi illegal na ibawasan ang sahod. Basta hindi ito pinilit ng management. Hindi ito in-enforce. This is negotiated. And this there is a consideration for the withdrawal. Oh, under any of the following circumstances, uh, yung Pwede mong bawasan ang sahod. Meron pang panglima pala eh. 
Oh. Kung nagkamali ka ng nabigyan mo siya ng sahod na, ang sahod niya, 20,000, nagkamali ka ngayon, nagkamali ng pindot yung computer na nagiging 200,000 na dagdagan ng zero. That's an honest mistake. And you know, if you remember the principle of solusio in DBT and due payment, Alam mo yung kaso ng Milun Bank? I'll tell you the story of Milun Bank. There was a the woman in in San Francisco, California, who sent 1,000 US dollar to his to her brother in the Philippines. No? Yung sister nasa San Francisco nagpadala ng 1,000 dollar through the bank. Uh, sa Melon Bank uh, dito sa kanyang kapatid na lalaki sa Pilipinas. Ayuda yon ayuda. Eh nagkamali yung bangko. Yung 1,000 dollar nagiging 1 million dollar. Oh. Alam naman ang lalaki na ang pinadala ng sister niya is 1,000 lang. Ang ginawa niya, winidro niya ng winidro, bumili siya ng maraming mga kotse, nag-abroad siya, naglustay siya, nagkasino siya. ano nangyari? Pinailan siya ng criminal case. Stop up. Because when you receive money which, are, which is not due to you, that is to lose you in DBT, you have to return it. And therefore, the principle of non-diminution will not apply if it is a mistake. You were given money out of mistake. There was not really a real full consent. No? Nagkamali. So pag nagkamali, pwedeng i-withdraw. No? Pwedeng withdrawal pala. Nagkamali ka pagpasok. I-withdraw mo na lang. No? Error in computation. Hmm. Meron pang mga iba yung conditional benefit no? and the condition did not happen. Halimbawa, sabihin sa iyo, ikaw, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Karyon, sabihin sa iyo ng employer mo, I will give you a bonus of 100,000 if you pass the bar. Or if you Halimbawa, merong offer ang UB. Mag-top notcher ka. Ilang milyon eh, bigay sa iyo. Uh, hindi nangyari yung condition. Hindi ka nag-top notcher. Nakapasa ka lang. Pero hindi ka naka-top notcher. So, you are not entitled to it. And do not consider it as a diminution or a withdrawal because the condition did not happen. Di ba? Ang galing na mga paliwanag ko sa inyo. Pag hindi pa ninyo yan maintindihan, iwan mo na lang sa inyo. Okay. In the case of Dabao Insular and Pal, the case of Rivera versus Espiritu, yan ang sinasabi ko sa inyo. You have to read this case. Uh, Gerardo Rivera versus Secretary of Finance Espiritu. Uh, Edgardo Espiritu under the administration of uh, President Erap Estrada. When uh, in Philippine Airlines, the employees waived their salary increase for 10 years. Pero mo hindi sila bibigyan ng increase for 10 years. Walang CBA negotiation for three, uh, 10 years. And uh, that agreement was questioned before the Supreme Court. And uh, the Supreme Court upheld the validity of that agreement because it was not imposed unilaterally. It was a product of negotiation and there was a just consideration. The workers were given uh, 300 share, uh, 300, uh, I think it is more than 300,000 shares of stock. It's one of them. Uh, uh, 300,000 pesos worth of shares of stock of Philippine Airlines for free. That is in lieu of salary increase. 
Napaka-talino ito si Mr. Lucio Tan. Sabi kayo, wilga ka ng wilga sa pal. Ngayon, baby, gagawin ko kayong co-owner ng pal. Hindi na kayo magwilga wilga Sarili niyo, kumpanya ninyo ang pal kayo, mihari. So, I'll give you worth 300,000 shares of stock. Lahat kayo, each one of you will receive shares of stock for free. Pero wala tayong salary increase for 10 years. Pumayag yung about 60%. Ang 40% nag, nag-question before the Supreme Court. And uh, they lost their case. The Supreme Court said, yung mga hindi pumayag, pwede na silang tumanggap ng separation pay. Pero yung mga pumayag, huwag ninyong pigilin yung pumayag na pumayag sila na walang salary increase. Hindi naman bawasan eh. Wala lang increase. No? And uh, uh, they receive 300,000 worth of shares of stock. See? So I have here a lot of cases. The case of Sibilia Trading versus Arbitrator Tomas Simana. The, the case of Globe Telecom versus Flores. The case of Meralco versus Kis- Kisombing. Ito yung... Uh, uh, case ng uh, mga security guard no Arco Metal Products the case of Davao Fruits versus Alu Associated Labor Union Davao Integrated Port Services versus Arbitrator Barkes all these cases involves diminution of benefits and this is one case Eastern Telecom versus is Eastern Telecom Employees Union. The, the facts are very simple. They have been receiving bonuses for so many years. Sobrang yaman ng mga telecom company at that time. Nagbibigay sila ng 15-month pay, 16-month pay. Uh, bigla silang nalugi. And we need draw nila ngayon yun. Uh, at kinasuhan sila. No? At uh, uh, ang tanong doon, yung bang pagbigay ng bonus for so many years became already a company practice that cannot be withdrawn unilaterally? The answer is yes. And uh, the members of the union are entitled to the payment of 14th month, 15th month, and 16th month bonuses. Can you imagine that? Meron silang 15th month, meron, uh, six, 14th month, 15th month, 16th month bonuses. And uh, the reason of the company na financial reverses are not acceptable. Para bang sinabi ng Supreme Court, ginawa na ninyong kaya yan na nanatili yung the, the reason why the workers stay with you. And what is most important here is that this is now embedded in the contract, which is the collective bargaining agreement. It is not just a company policy. It is written as part and parcel of the written contract, which is the collective bargaining agreement. So it cannot be withdrawn unilaterally. Hindi, iyan ay, iba yan doon sa waterfront ka sa Insular Hotel kasi, sa Insular Hotel it was negotiated. Sa PAL, it was negotiated, but here, abruptly lang itigil mo yung pagbayad ng 14 month, 15 month, and 16 month, and what is your alibi? Or what is your reason? The reason is we cannot afford. That reason is not acceptable. Quit claims. Nako, ito na ngayon ha. Yung mga company magpapaperma ng quit claim patapos sasabihin, bas- huwag na niyong basahin, permahan na lang ninyo. That is null and void. Because to be valid, number one, consent is knowingly. Ito na, lagi ninyong i-memorize yung hinabi ko ha. Knowingly, freely, and voluntarily. No? Sabihin na, Tinatanggap mo ba na hindi ka na bibigyan ng bonus simula sa taong ito? Yung bang pagtanggap mo, intindihan mo ba 
na mawawala sa iyo knowingly ha, mawawala sa iyo more than hundreds thousand of pesos freely did you give your consent without any intimidation force coercion no voluntarily in other words this is your decision nobody is promising you anything to give this decision and the elements of contracts are present consent object and consideration and the consideration must not be unconscionable yung unconscionable entitled siya ng 100,000 bayaran mo lang ng 10,000 kasi nagmamadali siya may sakit yung anak niya in dire necessity siya yung term na dire necessity you take advantage of the situation. Halimbawa, yung kapatid mo, ang anak niya nasa hospital, pumunta sa iyo, nangutang. Tapos sabihin mo, permahan mo ito. Bigyan kita ang pera, permahan mo ito. Yung pala, pinagbili mo na yung lupa mo na share mo sa mana. That is null and void. That is taking advantage of the dire necessity. His consent was not knowingly given no he was not even reading the contents because he was in a hurry you take advantage of that situation no? so this case of hiao uh, versus inil rc ang sabi naman dito pag voluntarily executed and there is no fraud or deceit and the uh, consideration is credible we have to uphold the validity of the agreement so if you are asked to decide whether an agreement, a waiver, a quit claim is valid, you have to look for the elements of a contract. Was consent freely given? Is the consideration fair, just, and reasonable? Is it not shocking to the conscience of man? Oh. So pagka mag-present yan, do not hesitate to uphold the validity of contracts because the law uh, encourages uh, voluntary settlement. No? Ito, sabi nga dito eh, ni Justice Reyes, eh, not all waivers and quit claims are invalid. They are, not all of them are against public policy. If the agreement was voluntarily entered into and the consideration is a reasonable, just, no? then you uphold the validity. But when the person making the waiver, uh, uh, although, although the law frowns upon quick claims, but when the person making the waivers voluntarily and with full understanding, nandun na naman yung tatlo eh, knowingly, freely, and voluntarily. You should be able to use the words. Huh? When you answer the bar examination question, you should, be, you should use these three terms because the examiner will look for it. Uh, knowingly, knowingly, freely, and voluntarily. Knowledge, freedom, and voluntariness. Pagka manager ka naman, lalo na abogado ka, pumirma ka ng quick claim katapos later on magreklamo ka na hindi mo naintindihan, eh dapat, dapat ka namang pagalitan. Kaya nga ang mga abogado, pag naluko, ako nga ilang beses na ako naluko, hindi ako nagre-reklamo eh. Bakit? Pagagalitan ka pa ng judge eh. Munta ka sa judge, pagagalitan ka. Ano mo si Judge Acosta sa RTC dito? Estudyante ko yan eh. Pati yung asawa niya, estudyante ko sa UI. O, oh, pagalitan ka. Abogado ka, pagkatapos pumirma ka ng contract, pagkatapos sasabihin mo, hindi mo naintindihan. Sabihin, hindi, saan ka ba nag-aaral? Kung tagayubi ka, hindi mo gagawin yun. No? Iwan ko lang, kung sa ibang eskulahan ka, tagayubi ka, hindi mo gagawin yun. Nakakahiya yun. An employer is, uh, the employee is not an ordinary laborer. He's an educated man 
mature, intelligent, with a college degree. May nangyari yan sa San Miguel Corporation eh, sa Mandawi. Umirma ng contract. Alam mo naman, ang abogado ng San Miguel, si Attorney Baldomero Estenso, naging dean ng UC. Pero ako doon, side office, doon na kami central office. Abogado kami doon. Pero sa Mandawi, si Attorney Estenso. Ayan, napanalo namin yung kaso na yun kasi engineer, uh, highly educated, nakatanggap ng milyones na separation benefits. Tapos later on, kinikwestiyon niya na yung sarili niya ang pinirmahan. So that kind of attitude will not be given to course. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's about 8 o'clock in the evening and we are still in the 15th principle. Now, I will finish this 15th article and we have to reserve the 16th up to 21 principle number 21 because there are so many cases involved there. Uh, para lang sa gabing ito, makatapos tayo ng labing limang art, uh, principle, okay na yan. No? Kasi baka magkaroon naman kayo ng uh, overload. Mental overload. No? Kailangan i-pacing ninyo yung utak ninyo. No? Huwag niyong kwersahin. Yan ang problema kasi yung mga hindi nag-aaral sa high sa when they were still in the Christmas so pumor hindi sila seryoso. Tapos pagdating nila sa portier at saka pag-review, saka sila magseryoso. Kuli na. Alam niyo ako nung nag-aaral ako from first chair. First chair ako wala akong grado lower than 1.5. No? Lahat May plot one pa ako, criminal law. Binigyan ako ng plot one, Judge Narbius. Alam mo si Judge Narbius? Magaling na professor yun. Plot one ako. Pero marami nagreklamo dati, mga classmate ko. Kasi si Judge Narbius kasi, executive judge yun. E ako, interpreter ako. Tapos, uh, pagka-examination na yun, kasi... Sobrang talino, yan yung memorize ang revised penal code. Eh. Sabi niya, uh, Josephus, you prepare the question. Can you imagine ako mag-prepare ng question? Pero ako lang nakakaalam nun. Hindi, hindi alam ng iba yun. So, ako yung gumawa ng question para sa midterm. Eh, siyempre, perfect ako doon dahil ako ang gumawa ng question. Tapos, pag natapos na yung exam, sabi niya, okay, Josephus, you check the papers. O check na naman ako. Ako na nga nang gumawa ng question. Ako pa mag-check. Tapos, after na mag-check. Okay, you compute the grade. O, submit namin doon sa registrar. Perma doon niya. Pero akong gumawa. Paano ako hindi maplatuan yan? Yan ang uh, reason dyan. Pero, uh, totoo, sa ibang subject, talaga namang Ang pinag-aralan ko yan kasi paano ko makakuha ng 84.93 sa bar na hindi ako nag-review. Hindi ako kumuha ng bar review kung hindi talaga seryoso ako. So from first year to fourth year, meron kami fraternity. Yung fraternity namin ay Future Barrister Society. UB Future Barrister Society. At ang initiation namin ay examination. Eh. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-join on kung hindi ka nakapasa sa exam. Wala kaming body contact sa hazing. Walang hazing. Initiation namin. And every Sunday, nag-aaral kami voluntarily. Then, uh, we give examination to each other. Lahat kami nakapasa sa bat. Yung bats namin, Isa ang magna cum laude, apat ang cum laude. Lahat kami nakapasa. Pero kami, 90% working student. Kasama si Atty. Frank Manilong, writer sa Sunstar. Cum laude yan. Si Ani Pasaylo, uh, provincial secretary dati. Si Judge uh, Piscal Silso Espinosa, classmate ko yan. 
So, itong 15th uh, principle is about bankruptcy. But since there are many cases, sa next next Monday ko na i-discuss ito kasi pag nalugi na talaga yung company at wala nang babayaran, ito na naman si Senator Boy Herrera from UB. Dati kasi from 1974 upon the promulgation of the Labor Code up to 1989, ang number one priority is government. Ang unang bayaran tax. But when Boy Herrera amended the Labor Code, Republic Act 6715, nilagay niya yung absolute preference. But despite the absolute preference, there is still higher than than the wages. And uh, ito, i-advance ko lang sa inyo, itong kaso ng Barayuga versus Asset Privatization uh, Trust where uh, it is established that the hierarchy, the priority of credits under Article 2244 of the Civil Code will uh, take precedence over Article 110 of the Labor Code. So this is a case of conflict between uh, Civil Code versus Labor Code, which will prevail. So that will be our lesson up to 21, Principle 21, next meeting and tonight. Uh, it's enough, we have discussed 14 principles. We have seven principles more and uh, Attorney Wagas, uh, we can now take picture because uh, for the first time we have reached, uh, how many, more than 60? Yes, okay. Saan galing itong mga tao na ito? Saan mo nirecruit to? Nirecruit ka dyan sa kulon? <laughs> Sige, mag picture ito guys sa kajit lang. Ano ito? Mga bagong estudyante? Um, I invited new students for the attorney but I think some of them saw our ad sa page. Uh, baka may mga taga-ibang planeta na naligaw dito sa UB. Okay lang yun. Okay, ra. okay lang yun. Kasi ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon ay walang pinipili. Walang discrimination, di ba? So, uh, kayong lahat ngayon, 60 kayo. Pag nag-like kayo, uh, nag-subscribe kayo doon sa aking, sa, sa aking uh, YouTube channel, tama na rin nyo kay Atty. Waga. Eh di, ang dami ninyo, maaabot na ako ng 800 kasi 750 to na ako eh. So, makuha ninyo lahat ng video. Sige, ang video ninyo. Walang bayad naman yung mag-subscribe. Akala nyo, may bayad yan. Walang bayad yan. Okay, Attorney Wagas, please uh, take picture. Page ni Has. Ah, wala na ni Ah, Okay. Ni ara tayo ni Ha lang last at ini. Asaman si Kwan, si Felix Tihero. Nandiyan ba si Felix? Tulog na ka, Felix. <laughs> hmm, marag. Hindi ko na kung kita ni Sir Felix. Si, si Ma'am uh, Velasco. Ano na si Sir Felix? Naapod si Dr. Velasco, attorney. I'm here, attorney. Did you learn anything tonight? Yes, lots of things, attorney. Very applicable.